morning. Welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me again to Matthew chapter 22. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, to Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw that there was a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words, and they sent their disciples to him along with Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said, Caesar's. And then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him, and they went away. <clears throat> so the Pharisees, they were this group who were zealous for the law, and as we have already seen in the Gospel of Matthew, who were at odds with Jesus. Why? Well, in their understanding of things and in the power that they held, Jesus was a threat to them. And the people were being swayed by Jesus. So they're trying to think how they can try to tangle up Jesus with his own words. So they send their disciples and ask Jesus if it's lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not. It's a relevant real-life question, um, which... By the way, Jesus is going to answer. He doesn't back away from. In other words, it's okay to have real-life conversations with Jesus, right? And apply God's Word and God's Spirit into our everyday life. In fact, that's kind of recommended. You know, that we don't just gather on Sundays or, on, you know, read your Bible once in a blue moon, but that we uh, take it in to apply it into our lives. And Jesus is for every day, for every situation. And so... Uh, here, unfortunately for the Pharisees, their premise is all wrong. They're looking to trip Jesus up. And so they, they'll end up missing the whole point, right? They'll, they'll miss Jesus' point. Um, and yet, through it, Jesus astounds them with his answer. Yeah, we're to pay what we're owed to the governing authorities, but also to God. And so, you're like, what do you mean to God? Well, Old Testament talks about a tithe, and Jesus never canceled the tithe, right? When uh, he mentioned about giving in other places and how the Pharisees and religious people uh, went about their business, he, he didn't say, well, stop giving. No, no, he said, you should have done these, but you should also do these other things, you know, love and justice and mercy. Uh, so tithing and giving should be part of the whole deal. But Jesus doesn't back down from tough questions. So if you have them, ask them. Ask them to those that you respect in the faith. Ask them to the Lord. Seek out his word to see what he would say. Jesus didn't give them a reason not to follow the authorities, not to call on the Romans to come after Jesus, right? And he definitely didn't give them a reason to not follow God. Because he is God. And so the question for us then is, are we rendering our lives to the Lord? Are we offering ourselves to Him? Not trying to trick Him, not trying to trick others, but just trying to follow. Our questions will be different, right? If you're trying to uh, trick or uh, 
change someone, your, your questions are deceptive, they're trying to lead in a certain direction. If your questions are honest and you're trying to follow, Jesus is all for that. Ask away. Until next time, a little bit now.